Yeah, so uh, they gave a presentation on a uh, patient that we had at uh, MD Anderson with a uh, very uh, serious uh, disseminated stenotrophomonas multophilia infection, uh, who's an immunocompromised patient with a refractory leukemia, uh, who had been neutropenic for uh, about a month, actually, uh, before developing a cellulitis with this organism. And uh, unfortunately, over the course of treatment, um, basically failed treatment with the first-line agent, which is trimethoprim sulfamethoxazole. Um, and uh, really it left us with a sort of conundrum as to what to do clinically um, because the patient was in a, a, a very bad way. Uh, it was a, a terrible infection that was worsening and we had just lost our uh, drug of choice for that. Um, and so we started looking you know, through the literature to see what might be uh, possibilities. Um, and so really, uh, unfortunately, the literature with stenotrophomonas treatment is, is quite limited. Um, even looking at the literature that led to trimethoprim sulfa becoming the drug of choice, that was really not necessarily because of any Thing good. It was just because that was the drug that existed when patients start getting in infected with this organism. Uh, and so since then, there have been uh, several sort of retrospective studies uh, looking at alternatives to it. Levofloxacin, for example, is frequently active in vitro against the organism. Minocycline, tigacycline are frequently active against the organism. And there have been studies looking at these, and they generally come to the conclusion that there's no difference, but with a major caveat for those. And unfortunately, because this literature is so limited and retrospective, there's a lot of confounding by indication in that the patients who get these alternative agents are likely not nearly as sick as the patients getting trimethoprim sulfa. Uh, and they're also, uh, the other issue with them is that stenotrophomonas causes a very sort of heterogeneous group of infections um, with a very high associated mortality and essentially no associated mortality uh, and anything ranging in between. So it's really difficult to sort of tease out what the drug effect might actually be there. Um, so you're really left with a very limited body of literature into what to, to do for this organism. Um, so we did uh, use those options. Uh, levofloxacin was resistant as the patient had been on prophylaxis with that beforehand. Um, and then we ended up giving uh, minocycline as well as ceftazidime, which were in vitro, uh, active in vitro. And unfortunately, those drugs also uh, failed uh, to treat the patient's infection adequately. Um, and then we were really uh, sort of stuck with what to do. Um, so that led us to do some more digging in terms of the literature for this organism uh, and really sort of understand the mechanistic basis for why uh, this organism becomes just <clears throat> so drug resistant. And when uh, compared to other gram-negative organisms that we commonly encounter, especially the Enterobacteriaceae, where resistance is predominantly uh, associated with acquisition of resistance elements, uh, Stenotrophomonas is more along the lines of Acinetobacter and Pseudomonas, and then it has everything it needs uh, right there in its own genome to become resistant to essentially everything we have. Um, and in addition to um, the two probably most well-known mechanisms in stenotrophomonas are a, uh, two beta-lactamases known as L1 and L2. Uh, the L1 beta-lactamase is a metallo-beta-lactamase that's very similar to other metallos such as NDM or VIM in that it hydrolyzes essentially all antimicrobials we have with the exception of, or all beta-lactams we have rather, with the exception of Astreonam, and it is not inhibited by any of the uh, commercially available uh, beta-lactamase inhibitors. L2 is a uh, cephalosporinase, it's a class A cephalosporinase, and that has a substrate profile of basically everything other than carbapenems, but it is inhibited by uh, commercially available beta-lactamase inhibitors, especially clavulonate and avibactam. So that led us to, to explore the possibility of synergy between uh, astreonam, which would be not hydrolyzed by the L1, and a uh, ceftazidine maybe bactam, which would inhibit that other beta-lactamase. And it turned out there actually was in vitro synergy for this organism. We did use that combination uh, to try to treat the patient, but unfortunately, the uh, infection progressed and the patient ultimately uh, passed away, unfortunately. Um, and so really, the other lesson that we took from this is that uh, in immunocompromised patients, particularly those with hemologic malignancy, stenotrophomonas is an can be an absolutely devastating infection. And even if you have a bunch of antimicrobials that are active in vitro, uh, even if you use them, you use them appropriately, you use them early, the patient, uh, unfortunately, the host conditions might not necessarily allow uh, for the infection to clear, as was the case here. Um, so it really just is a, a, a good lesson, and just because a drug is active in vitro doesn't necessarily mean it'll work in a patient. And it is also a good lesson to sort of call for a better understanding of these infections and risk factors for it, so we can prevent them from happening and avoid these issues of potentially having to treat an untreatable infection.